episode 133 of the Idea Space podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. Now, this month, I'm talking about the ways that we can stay in love with our businesses, love our businesses more, and make sure that we don't fall out of love with them. Because as you already know, it is so easy to become exhausted or even distracted, overwhelmed, and overwrought by like tasks. Um, ideas that are swirling around your head or, or even a strategy that you hear. Like, you know, maybe you've been on a walk and you've been listening to a podcast. You're like, oh, I need to go home and do this thing right now. And that strategy totally distracts you for the next afternoon, right? And in addition, it's also really scary to put yourself out there and be visible in the marketplace. So that's another reason why it can be so exhausting to run our businesses. And then, you know, we worry like, what if nobody wants what we have to offer? And what about the haters? And I want to talk about what about the haters today? Because sometimes those haters and the naysayers and the eye rollers come from inside your own friend or family group. Like there are so many reasons for us to slide into overwhelm, into avoidance, self-judgment, self-doubt. So today I have a guest for you who I really think you're going to enjoy a lot. Her name is Mary Kay Kemper. And she went from basically zero dollars to millions of dollars inside an industry that people really love to hate direct marketing, aka direct sales, network marketing, or MLM, multi-level marketing, however you've heard of it, you've probably at some point had somebody approach you via sliding into your DMs with a, hey girl, want to join my team approach. (laughs) And it has made you feel like it's slimy. It has made you hate direct marketing. It has made you avoid it at all costs. There's been something probably that's given you a bad taste in your mouth about some kind of network marketing business out there, whether it's the quality of the product or the way that they market themselves, whatever. So that is literally why I asked Mary Kay to be on because she talks about the haters and the naysayers and the friends and family who told her that they would basically disown her if she actually started getting a business going with an MLM company. And so remember, we're talking about how to love your business more and she's learned to love this business and make it work for her. And I know Mary Kay personally. She is not a bullshitter. She doesn't do sleazy tactics. She really does a lot of self-work and she's a leader. And so she not only makes this work for her, she's actually making it work for thousands of other women. So I really want you to open your mind, come on into this conversation. I think you're going to feel inspired and lit up by it. And what I would love is for you to take a screenshot of the episode and tag me on Instagram. I'm at Jen Liddy Coach. Let me know what you think of Mary Kay, our conversation, this podcast and what she has to say about learning to love her business and also making a lot of money while she's doing it because there's no shame in making a lot of money. Okay, I'll talk to you next week. Enjoy the rest of this podcast. Bye. You know, what I hear from many women specifically when it comes to network marketing is it's bullshit. There's a stigma. I'm never going to be successful. I feel embarrassed. Or there's a stigma out there for people who are network marketers who are hitting us up to buy their products. So today I have brought on an expert to help us talk about, unpack, examine this stigma around network marketing. So whether you are a network marketer or you have an opinion about network marketing and direct sales, you're going to want to pay attention to this conversation because I'm talking today to Mary Kay Kemper. Mary Kay is an ambassador of Limelight and she's actually at an incredibly high level. She's a platinum director. She actually, she's been in this business eight plus years. And her team brings over $77 million a year in. She's in charge of a team that has over 23,000 people in nine markets. So I'm talking to her today. This is a woman who's not like bullshitting around. This is not a woman who is like just dipping a toe in. She has jumped into the pool and has figured out how to make it work for her. So when I reached out and I said, Hey, did you ever have a stigma around network marketing when you started? She was like, oh yeah. And let's talk about it. So Mary Kay, thank you so much for being here to talk about this sensitive topic. Hi, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so thrilled to be here today. It's my pleasure. And my dog is definitely going to bark you guys because the UPS man deigned to come on my street. So I'm sorry about that. (laughs) Mary Kay, let's get started. (laughs) Let's get started talking about your business. Tell us about how you got into Lime Life, how you got into network marketing, and who do you serve? Yeah, as you mentioned, I've been in network marketing for almost eight years. Actually, my eight-year anniversary will be February 4th of 2021. So almost eight years. It Sometimes it feels like yesterday. Sometimes it feels like a lifetime. But I got into network marketing very intimidated, very unsure, very scared 
I am a corporate woman. I came from the background of corporate America and I worked on Wall Street for 12 years. The last five of the 12 years working for JP Morgan Chase in the heart of Manhattan doing high yield bond sales. So I was very much raised as you go to work, you get a job, you work from nine to five, or maybe in Wall Street, seven to seven. You know, you get your two weeks vacation and that's it. I didn't really have an entrepreneurial mindset. I didn't know really what that even meant. And I didn't think that I even had a skill set for that. So when I was asked and I was approached to help start Lime Life, because it was really a very new idea at the time, I know the co-founders very personally, and they came to me with this idea. So they were in retail. They ran a company called Alcone Company, which is a distributor of all the hard to find professional brands in makeup. Okay. So they serviced Hollywood, they serviced TV studios, they serviced Broadway, and they provide them with professional grade makeup for celebrities, you know? And they're also the place where, you know, any beauty professional or makeup artist might go after cosmetology school to build their kit, right? Gotcha. But it wasn't something that the everyday woman would go there to purchase their products. So the concept was bringing professional makeup to everyday women through Limelight, okay? So it's basically a magnetic, customizable palette system where you get to choose your colors, you get to choose your shade, you get to choose what you want and what suits you and create your palette of professional makeup. So it was very, you know, it was scary to say the least for you. Yeah. But even for our co-founders, they came from the retail world. When they had this brilliant idea, because who wouldn't want the makeup to the stars, right? When they had that brilliant idea and they went to consultants and they were asking them, how do I do this? You know, how do I help women make more money retailing professional makeup? And the consultants kept coming back with the idea of direct sales and network marketing as the way to go. And they were like, oh, really? (laughs) Oh, okay. Okay. Let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. And one of my CEOs, and as I mentioned, she knows me personally, she came to me as a potential customer and said, would this be something that you'd be interested in purchasing? Right. And at the time I said, no, like I'm not a celebrity. I don't walk a red carpet. Why do I need that grade of makeup? And then I tried the products, Jen, and I was Uh, so blown away. And I was like, okay, this is better than anything I've used. I felt and looked more beautiful. I knew that this was a secret. And I called my now CEO back up and I said, I don't just want to buy these products. I want to help you launch this idea. So I was very fortunate to be the very first person to join this company. And when she came to me and said, we're going to bring this as a network marketing company, I nearly passed out on my floor. Because I, as I, as you said in the introduction, I had the stigma, you know, I thought that that was plan B for losers. Thank you for saying that. Yes. That was it. I mean, that's all I kept saying, you know? Yeah. And I had all the naysayers. I had a family that was like, if you do that, I will not support you. It was a lot of negative naysayers and negative feedback from my, what we call warm market, not yeah. just warm, but hot market. Hot. Okay? Hot. The people that love you. My hottest market was telling me that they would be embarrassed if I were to do a business like that. Oh my God. These words are the words I hear all the time. Losers, embarrassed, shameful. I won't support you. I can't support that. It's bullshit. I hear this all the time. Yes. and so. Then it became because I knew these co founders of my particular company so well, and I knew their heart and I knew the mission and the purpose of why they were bringing this to market and why they were bringing it as a network marketing model, right? So I got behind the mission, I got behind the idea, I got behind the purpose of why they were doing this. And I really looked at it like a business, okay? So think about it. If there's a business where somebody says to you, I've got the next million dollar idea. Would you like to get behind it? Wouldn't you say yes? Wouldn't you say yes? What I'm curious about though, you believed in the products. And I think a lot of women who get into network marketing, they believe in the products, right? They've used the products. They love the products. They want their own business. 
And people are telling them, you can do this. You can do this as a business. It's eventual freedom for you, time, freedom, money, freedom, creative freedom, whatever, which it is. And you are, and then you have people in your back pocket saying, you're crazy. You're a loser. This is not a real business. So what I want to know is when you have like two of the three pieces of the equation, how the hell do you move forward? Great question. And the answer is you authentically be you. Okay. You get to change the narrative. You get to change how you show up in this business. You get to change how you run this business. So when I looked at it like a business, it's a product people want. It's a compensation plan that pays me well. It's a mission and a purpose and co-founders that I believe in and trust. The only thing that made it network marketing or direct sales or whatever you want to call it is the mode of transportation that the product is going to go through. That's it. I think it's fascinating. So I actually, I use a lot of products from network marketing companies. My shampoo, my makeup and skincare. Like there, like I actually, there's so many that when I actually drive by a CVS at this point, I think who's shopping at CVS? Like I buy everything through these companies that are either organic or whatever. Like, so I really wonder like who's buying all of this? Like, you know, who's buying swab is what I want to know. Right. So I get that. I like you get on board with everything, but what is the, when you, when you have somebody new come onto your team, what are the stigmas that they're dealing with besides Maybe somebody has told them they're not going to support them. What are some of the other problems from onboarding? Number one, it's fear and judgment, right? And so I always believe like, if you're in judgment of yourself, you're judging others, right? So they're probably out there looking at maybe context from some other network marketing or, or, you know, how somebody else is doing the business and they're judging that. So they're projecting that onto themselves, right? Yes. That's why I say the way you do this business is the way you're going to do this business. And so when somebody on my team comes to me and says, I feel like I'm salesy. Yes. Well, the fact that you even are saying that means you're not salesy. Mm, The fact that you're like aware enough, self-aware enough. You're aware of it. So you're not going to do it. I mean, people that are salesy don't even know that they're being salesy. (laughs) You're telling me the people who drop in... People who drop into my DMs and go, "Hey, girl," <laughs> yeah, they're, being, they're being. That's a, yeah. Let's talk about that. So, let's how do we make this our own? Yes, let's, let's talk, talk about, about this. That. How do we make it our own? Yes. So, this is what I love about Lime Life so much, and it was honestly a commitment that I made as the very first beauty guide because I believe that you create a culture. You create a culture in a network marketing company, and be very careful and be very, very like precise about the culture that you do join. Okay. It really does dictate everything across the board. So when we started Lime Life, we really wanted it to be a safe place for people to unlock their magic, to unlock their purposeful life. Not being a network marketing pro, not being, you know, celebritized million dollar earner, this and that. No, who are you? What do you want in your life? And how are you going to use Lime Life as a vehicle to get that? And so we, in my opinion, we grow CEOs here. Mm, I love this. We grow CEOs. We don't grow a bunch of robots that are being fed a system that then tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people are all doing at the same time. Yeah. Which to me, that's manipulation. I mean, I think that that's people being manipulated or coerced into look at me with all this success and look at me with all of these wins and when it's not actually based in truth, it's a little, little, it's a little, not the truth. I mean, maybe there's a little bit of truth in it, but not the truth in it. And so what happens is they get told on any given day, everybody's going to post blah, 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 whatever that might be. And typically that would be a high engagement post, right? Maybe ask your network a question so that you get a lot of algorithm or whatever. And then they'll follow that up right with an impact post. Look how this company impacted me. Okay. So it just, it feels, and people get that. 
You know, I think that's the bottom line is what you're saying is Lime Life has created a culture of empowering people to be independent in their choices as to how they're going to grow the business for themselves. That's what you mean by growing your own CEOs versus here's a plug and play system and model. And here are the exact posts on the exact day. And you have to do it in kind of this robotic formula. Exactly. Okay. And I'm not generalizing. Let me be very clear. I'm not trying to generalize. I'm just saying that I think that's what's contributing. Yes. Stigma. To the ickiness factor. People are seeing that. They're feeling that. They're seeing it on their feed, whether you think they are or they're not. And you know, I'm a big energy person. And when you start to build an energy around that, when you feel like I'm not really feeling authentic about this, Mm -hmm. you know, or I'm not really feeling like this is speaking to me, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm being told to do it. And I'm told if I do this, my business is going to grow. Right? Yeah. So when we go in, that's an energy that that particular person is putting out there too. Whether you believe it or not, it is felt and it duplicates and it multiplies and it is a real, a real thing in my opinion. So if you're going into, and if you're considering going into an MLM or you're somebody who has been part of an MLM and you're still struggling to be, to get traction, so you're saying the very first question to ask yourself is, do I feel like I can be me in the confines of running this business? Yes. Do I feel like I can do this authentically? And listen, I have built my seven figure business off of social media. Yeah. Because social media did not feel authentic to me. I'm in my late 40s. I feel like I missed a decade of social media. Like I feel like the 30 year olds, they get it. It's like they grew up with social media and they know how to do it. But for me, that's not where I was going to reach my network. Network marketing is about building relationships, networking and building relationships. When you build authentic relationships, and I told you at the beginning of this interview, my own family did not support me. Okay. It did not support me, which intimidated the heck out of me. And I thought to myself, well, what do I do now? And I really learned that I have to build relationships. I have to build trust around me, around my product, around my brand, and do it how it feels good to me. I think a lot of people don't even realize in network marketing that they're plugging into a system that doesn't feel authentic to them. And that's where it gets mucky. Because your network, your people, your friends, your family, they will feel that. And I'm going to be honest with you, Jen, there have been times even in my line life business where I have seen, I mean, comparison is a real thing in this business. And I've seen other people doing it away. And I was like seeing them having success. And I lost my way quite a few times. And it was an instant drop in my team's success and in my success. So the minute I got back plugged into me and why I do this business and using Lime Life as a vehicle for the life that I want, unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> you know, that Mary Kay's not fooling around. Like she's a seven figure earner and she's got a huge team underneath her and she's really working on her life and work balance. Like this is a woman who's constantly doing the work. So that's why I really wanted to talk to you today. So you've really given us some good insights into what to look for, how to think about marketing. And frankly, what you're talking about when it comes to marketing is what every marketer should be doing, which is developing trust and relationships because it's a marathon. It's not getting into somebody's DM and converting them right away. So like everything you're talking about here is good marketing management anyway. Absolutely. I'm really curious though, is there an element of the people that you manage where you see them using this bullshit as a crutch to keep them from having the money that they desire or having the life they desire. Like this old story of like, yeah, but it's network marketing and I feel yucky. Like I feel that that is kind of bullshit. Oh my God. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> oh my God. Can you say that louder? Can you say that louder? And one <laughs> Can you say that louder? Can you say that louder? And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, Jen, I had that exact feeling. So I told you at the beginning of this interview, I was broke, broke before getting into network marketing. I had two options in my life. I was going to claim bankruptcy or I was going to put my home in foreclosure. That was my reality. That was my truth. And I still even almost said no. 
Like, how dare I? How dare I? I'm broke. I should be accepting anything at this point, you know? And I almost said no because of my own, you know, judgment or fears, or even worse, that somebody else was going to come rescue me and give me the life that I desire. And it's going to all work out and money grows on trees and God will provide or whatever I might've been thinking at that time, but I definitely was not thinking that I could save me. So this is all about deciding whether you're in an MLM and you call it direct sales, or you just want to start your own business. This is about deciding to be your own goddamn hero. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Grab the mic. Good. Be your own hero. Yes. 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 Be your own hero. Whatever it is that you want. I mean, you know, one of the questions I ask people when they join my team, because it's really important for me to understand how life is occurring for someone. I can't be a good leader or a good mentor until I understand them. Because what might come easy to me most likely will not come easy to them, vice versa, right? So it doesn't become, you know, a conversation of how many people are you going to sell to or how many people are you going to try to recruit? It becomes a conversation of how does life occur for you? What are your dreams? What are your wishes? You know, what, it, what is it that it looks like for you? Because if somebody is having, you know, a marital problem or a relationship problem, they're most likely not going to have very good energy or motivation to go out and sell lip glosses tomorrow. Right. If you think about the, the way that you're that. the way that you're empowering them. When you ask them that question, how is life happening for you? That empowers them to ask that of their customers. How is life happening for you right now? Oh, are you feeling like a piece of shit? You're probably not gonna really want to be buying lip gloss right now, right? right? How can I serve you is always the basis of my conversations. Yes. Every so single day. Love this. And so that I think is what has rooted my team in such a stable place. Number one, like there's a lot of movement in network marketing. And I, for me with Lime Life, it has always been for the higher and greater good. Anytime somebody has left and anytime Mm. a challenge or anything, I always fully in full faith trust that everything is happening for the greater and higher good, because I believe that people have journeys, you know, and maybe their journey here has ended and they're ready to go somewhere else. You know, I think another stigma associated with this industry is once you get in, you can't get out Mm. because maybe you joined a friend and you don't want to disappoint that friend, or maybe you're afraid to fail for that friend or, you know, and, and that's why I always ask like, what's going on in your life? What's happening? Talk to me about your life and how can I support where you're at? Because just yeah. You just keep going back to the point over and over again that if you, if this isn't serving you and it's not authentic to you and you're not making a choice for you, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Right. Whether right. that person is like saying, you shouldn't do this, you're a loser, or this person is saying, you have to do this because you're on my team. Like Those are not good reasons. So you have to like your reasons is what I'm hearing you say over and over again. You have to like your reasons. Absolutely. Yeah. And you have to trust that everything you need, you have, right? You have everything you need. And then it's up to you to figure out how is this going to resonate with my life and fit into my life? Because the residual income of this business is so crazy good. It's a Mm no-brainer. You know, Jen, in 2021, if people are not looking at a plan B, if people are not looking at another revenue stream, really think they're missing out on something really significant. So I get that there's stigma, context, whatever you want to call it. It's time to let all that go and find a company that you can support, find a product that you use with full integrity and love and share it and simply share it and then trust and surrender the rest of it. You know, like there's a level of surrendering. Even for me, who has this multi, multi multi-million dollar business, I don't know. I can't control people actually coming to my business and saying yes to me. I can't control customers actually buying from me and my team. Nobody can. Nobody can. So there's a level of trust and belief, and then you have to surrender. 
and say, yeah, I'm doing everything I can, I'm being as authentic as I can in this business. And I trust that what I need will find its way to me. And yeah. it's always you that. are definitely bringing legitimacy to a business that people are so quick to say that's bullshit. And you don't have to like all the tactics that are brought to you. Like you have every right as a consumer to say, no, thank you. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Don't contact. Like you have a right to do that. But people have judged this industry rather than judging the tactics. And I think that's a big mistake that people have made. That's holding us all back from supporting each other. And it's holding women back from having huge incomes and huge impact in the world. Huge mistake. It is a huge mistake. And I'm not going to say that it's not hard work because it is the hardest work I've ever done in my life but it is the most rewarding, purposeful life and freedom filled life. So I think another thing that people may hear a lot in network marketing is team no sleep. And I have to work seven days a week. I'm going to tell you right now, I run the biggest team at Lime Life. I am not team no sleep. I have balance in my life. I have freedom. If I am trying to sell a life of freedom, I better be living it. Yeah, because you don't want to be a hypocrite. Exactly. And I teach my team to do the same. You know, there's so much you can get done in 20 minutes a day in this industry. So yes, I think, and again, that, that comes back to the comparison thing, because you're going to see leaders within your organization that are team no sleep, that Mm -hmm. are doing all these things that are creating these amazing systems that are giving the aha training. And you have to be content enough in your leadership and in the way you're doing the business to say that serves them. That's not my path, right? And so I think that's another amazing thing about Lime Life is that we have a lot of examples of different types of leadership that are at the top of the company. And you know, the key to this business is creating duplication. You want to be duplicatable. You want people to look at you and say, if she can do it, I can too. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, for me, that is one of the biggest things that I want to wake up every day and set the intention for is that people will believe in themselves because when they believe in themselves, watch out. Like I said, at the beginning of our, we, before we got on our recording, I said, it's Dorothy in the red shoes. It's literally about believing what you can accomplish. I have, I have the sign in my office. You had the power, my dear. You just had to. <laughs> oh, right, right. So that, that sits in my office and I look <laughs> at it every single day. And it's really true. You know, everybody has limitless magic in them. And if you're with the right network marketing company that really supports you and the pull over the profit, you are going to unlock even more of that magic and you're going to step into your most purposeful life. And that has absolutely been my journey here. So I'm so proud of you and so happy for you. And I want to say thank you for talking about this with me because I feel like we have to shine the light on the fact that this is an issue and that we need to talk about it. The message is over and over again. If somebody is listening to this and they want to follow you, how can they get into your energy? How can they get into your orbit? Well, I have a YouTube channel, so you can find me on YouTube under Mary Kay Cooper. You can find me on Facebook, Mary Kay, K-A-Y, Duffy, D-U-F-F-Y hyphen, Kemper, K-E-M-P-E-R. You can find me on Instagram at M-K Stylista, S-T-Y-L-I-S-T-A. So you can find me on platform. So that's pretty much and if you want to see hanging out. Pretty and much I right. suggest that you do, especially if you're interested in saying like, does she walk the walk? Does she do this authentically? Go follow Mary Kay and watch what she does. Watch how she shows up. It doesn't feel bullshitty people. And this is a woman who has multiple seven figures going on in her business and has the creative freedom, the time freedom and the financial freedom to do all the other shit she wants to do. So if she's not inspiring you, I got big dreams, Jen. And you know, I'm a single mom to three kids, recently divorced. And, you know, I'm just, I'm so grateful for every single day that I get to work this business, which is home-based business. And I get to be with my kids. I get to do what I need to do with them on days that they're not feeling their best or that I need to go somewhere with them. And it's just, I have so much gratitude for this industry. So please, please, please just find a company that you love, find a product you can support and believe in. Find a leader who resonates with you and believe in yourself. And there isn't anything you can't do and accomplish for sure. Go be your own hero. Yes. Oh my God. (laughs) Can I hashtag that? 
<laughs> go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Mary Kay, thank you so much for your time and energy today and your expertise and for talking about this topic. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. It's so good to see you. And I hope I you get too. to see some of you people out in the social media world. Thank you so much. All right. Everybody, I want to say thank you for showing up and staying with us through this conversation. We ping-ponged around a little bit, but we got there. And so, because Mary Kay and I could honestly, we just like, we talk for hours. So we're lucky we got this all done. <laughs> Thanks, Mary Kay. Thank you.